Are we going to Rust of All 3 when it's announced? Well, if I'm still alive, yeah. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here in Dad's garage talking about the Rustival. It's our Rustival Roundup. In fact, actually, it's Rustival 2. Rustival 2 Roundup. Uh, it was held on, I've got this here to remind me, on the 28th of September 2024 at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon. First things first. Yes. How are you? I'm all right, thank you, Gromit. It's a week since the Rustival. Yep. Have you recovered? I jolly well have, yes. Um, the weeks since the Rustival when we're filming this. Um, did you have a good time? Yeah, thank you. Good, that's it, end of the video. <laughs> that's it, it was really, it was, it. It was really nice. Rustival 2, it was all right. Um, let's break it down then. So, first and foremost, the dates. 28th of September, a good time to hold a car show. It was, it was bloody lucky, wasn't it? We've had some absolute pants weather and it was a glorious day. The entire week leading up to it, rain, 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 yeah, rain, rain. The world's been flooded. And the day on the day, the weather, beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. It was actually warmer than yeah, the first wind, Rustival. You think got a nasty cold wind. First Rustival is a nasty old cold wind. It was actually lucky that I managed to make it there because leading up to the Rustival, I was in Florida and the flight after hours was cancelled and all the other flights were cancelled up until the so next week. what happened week. to all the people? Are they stuck at Disneyland? Well, they're all courtesy a la Mickey Mouse, I suppose. Um, mm. But we got home and got back in time, and then there was a mad rush to get the micro working. Yeah. But we took the micro. So, location. So, date, good. Weather, good. Yeah. Location, good. Yeah, well, it's very central, isn't it? It's very central and hard standing, which is not yeah. great for you walking around all day, but... Considering it had been chucking it down with yeah, rain all lots week. Lots of car shows on grass would have been cancelled, wouldn't yeah, they? Absolutely. Um, and the British Motor Museum. Winner, winner. Winner, winner. Um, let's address it for people that haven't been to the Rustival, what the Rustival actually is. Give me your definition of what Rustival is, and I'll give you mine. Inclusive car show. That's exactly it. If it's got wheels, it's welcome, I think yeah. is, the, is the strap line. It's held and run by three automotive YouTube superstars, ranking in no particular order Mr. and Mrs. Hubnut, uh, Matt I wouldn't Furious call them driving. superstars, I'd call them absolute legends. Oh, wow. Well, they're the absolute legends. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Hubnut from yeah. Hubnut, obviously. She's a chirpy old lady. Yeah, she's, 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 she's I like Mrs. Hubnut. She's super happy all the time. Um, Matt from Furious Driving. He likes uh, his cars. Yeah. Who's into everything. Yeah, He's a yeah, very yeah. clever man. And Steph from Our Driver Classic, our proton she's friend. She's got passion beyond belief about cars. Yeah, and she's doing uh, good work in the um, classic car world, especially with women drivers. Uh, and uh, somebody else behind the scenes we need to give a shout out to, Matt Pink whose company, along with the other three, organised the event. It's a lot uh, of, I bet it's a lot of effort. Yeah, hard work. Oh, yeah. It's, it's well worth it, though. Um, they do need a, a shout-out because it's, it's a testament to what they've done, considering it was sold out and it's their second show. Yeah. And it's, it's, and they've hit the nail on the head, is what I want to say. Uh, and the price point, again, I want to bang on about this, £11 each. £22. You we got to attend the British Motor Museum, included in that price, which, by the way, on the day is £19, if you want to go around it. Um, so, £4, effectively. It's a bargain, isn't it? Yeah. What do you get for £4? You don't get a flipping ice cream, do you? No. So, £22 for the two of us. We both got entry to the British Motor Museum and a car show. It's... I don't know how they do it, but they do it. I'm sure... What I like about it is... Some time ago, in the classic car scene, a lot of them things, oh, it's just somebody riding around in an old banger. No, it's not. It's their classic car. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's, it's... Here, behind us, what's in the workshop, case in point. This is your car. Yeah. Right. Peugeot 406 Estate, T-Reg, 98. You've had it nearly from new. And you keep it going. Look at that headlight. It needs polishing. But oh. it's your car. Yeah. And people would be interested to see that. Not everybody. No. But there would be a certain group of people at the Rustival who would go, ah, oh, Peugeot 406 Estate, and have a good look around it. As you say, it's inclusive, but it's a bit of everything. 
it's not we only accept cars pre-1995. We only accept cars pre-2000. If it's got wheels, it's coming in. I was looking at a video of the uh, Stafford Classic Motorcycle Show, and there's some stuff in there. I can appreciate it because it's like, it's like it was when it was new. Mm. It's absolutely, immaculately perfect, wonderful. But if that's what you're happy with, but you can't go out for a thrash on it on a Sunday morning. No. You know, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to keep it in your super dry shed or your conservatory or your hall and keep it dry and clean. There were cars there at the Rustaville that fit that bill. Yeah, there were. For example, there was a Singer drop top. No, sorry, I beg your pardon, a standard drop top. And it was immaculate. And the people that owned it, I think, were the chairman or the deputy chairman of the standard club. And they are of a certain era and of a certain style of car show. Then there's other people, like, I'm going to pick a name out of the hat, Ian Ferguson, mm -hmm. who attended in his 17-plate Kia. <laughs> but it was great. Great. Well, it's good to see things yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. I did see one or two cars turn up on trailers. The, but that's the but that is the thing. You could bring your trailer queen. You can bring your garage bubble queen. You yeah, can, can bring, bring your, your old every, banger. You can bring your everyday car. You can bring your old banger. I absolutely love it. Don't you think there's more people trying to keep older cars going? Oh, that is a whole different video. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why buy a new car when yes. I've got one here and I can keep it going? I am a big advocate for Banganomics. Yeah. Yes, well, I've that's, got that's a 20 odd of them. That's but, coined by a classic car magazine, isn't it? But I'm a big advocate yeah. for Banganomics. Let's face it, still my daily driver is a 2011 <sighs> plate Smart. Not a brand new car, but to me, actually, it's the newest car I own. And it's, mm. it's, it's modern, in my opinion. But yes, as you say, there are people running around in R Edge Golfs who are keeping them going. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. I think there's more people trying to do it themselves as well. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Because a lot of everything's these... going up in price. <laughs> because 30 years ago, <laughs> there's a story, isn't there? When you buy a car, and the, the handbook told you how to change the spark plugs. Now the handbook will say, do not drink the battery acid. <laughs> what a world we live in. Anyway... <laughs> um, it was a good show. That's, I think that's the takeaway. The handbook on, my, on this Triumph, bet every page it says, doing this may cause injury or death. Doing this, riding this motorcycle may cause injury or death. <laughs> Looking at the bike may <laughs> cause injury or death. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Put his petrol in the bike. Basically, that's a death trap. Don't, well, it is a death trap, but don't get me started on motorbikes. You know how I feel. Um, so it was good. It was good, good weather, good location, good organisation and a good turnout. It's um, a damn good crowd, isn't it? Mm, lots of good people. So let's talk about the Micra. We took the Nissan Micra. Uh, it was your idea, your crazy idea. It was. To get my car out the garage. Yeah. And actually, it was nice to take it there. We missed all the content If filming. I say so myself, it was a damn good idea. About <laughs> well, the car had sat for, what, 10 years yeah. in my garage. Rusting. Unused, unloved, rusting away. And uh, we got it out of the garage. And now it's sitting on the driveway and I can take it to the shops if I want or take it to work if I want. I see you went to fetch a takeaway in it. I did. <laughs> I did. I went to fetch a pizza in it. I felt, I felt like I should be delivering it on the way yeah. back. <laughs> I just turned up for the books. Um, it's a wonder he didn't give you a big hamper. This mate, can you do these while you're deliver out? Deliveroo on the top. <laughs> can you do these while you're out, bud? Um, but the, the, the car went well. So we had a, yeah. a couple of issues before uh, the Rustaville, which uh, we'll be addressing in a video, um, which was basically low petrol and it yeah. hadn't been run for a couple of months. Um, but we got there. Yeah. With a check engine light on the. It's only the blind oxygen sensor. Yeah, oxygen sensor threw up a fault, didn't it? Yes. But thankfully, the King Bolin and our micro user manual here has helped us diagnose and solve the problem. So, oxygen sensor fault, but it ran fine. We got to the Rustaval, we got back from the Rustaval. The micro was a little bit thirsty. So you say? Mm. But it ran right, it ran okay. It wasn't bad for a 20, what, 24 year old car? It was a nicer, more comfortable drive than your Nissan Note back from the airport was the other day. 
You, the seats are a bit hard, aren't they? It's not a nice place to be. Lovely car, lovely thing to, well, I say that, lovely thing to drive, you never let me drive it. No. Um, but uh, it wasn't very comfortable. Anyway, Micra got there, and we parked next to a Ferrari, which belonged to well, the it's red. JM on cars. We were a bit out the way. It wasn't the best place to be, really. No. Uh, in hindsight, I was probably disappointed with where we were located. Why did they put us there? Out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Shunned. Uh, ah, it's John and his dad. Stick them out of the way. Um, but uh, we still drew some attention. We still spoke to lots of good people. And that, I think, is what the show is about. We didn't need the car to f draw attention to ourselves. We've got you. No, it's not me, mate. It's you. You're the <laughs> blooming superstar. Uh, genuinely, if you did see us at the Rustival and came to say hello and said nice things, thank you. And I'm sorry um, all the people we missed as well, because I'm sure we must miss some people. It, it's, it was quite humbling, the amount of people that saw us, made a beeline for us, yeah, came chat. to shake our hand and have a chat. And people that are automotive YouTubers that I had never heard of. For example, 6D Diesels made a beeline to us and said, well, I really love your channel. And then afterwards I've discovered that they've, you know, a channel with 100,000 followers. So the fact that these people are also watching our channel yeah, just is seen, quite a nice thing. Well, you get on that YouTube, don't you? And you think, oh, oh, what's that? And you, and you have a look, don't you? Yeah, up next. Yeah. Up next, this, that, and the other. So yeah, I, think can't, we... ab can I, I can't admit to watching lean beef patty though, can I? Uh, she, she, she's a um... bodybuilding lady. <laughs> but she mm, she wears some dubious clothing. Yeah, I mean, well, she wears I some tight shorts. I think that's part of the marketing. I think if I was to wear shorts like that, I'd lose a lot of subscribers. But if Mrs. John Cooper were to wear shorts like that, and a, yeah. with, protons would go up in market value overnight. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we met lots of nice people and we spoke to lots of people. And you are right, there were lots of people we didn't get to speak yeah. to. Um, there were just that many people there, weren't there? There was lots of people. So if we missed you, apologies. If you missed us, apologies. Uh, if you didn't want to see us and did, apologies. <laughs> <laughs> apologies. I was, sort of, I was trying to avoid them too. <laughs> oh, it's that bloke. Uh, but it was, a, it, it was a good day meeting lots of people. And you got given some presents from Alan Simpson? I did, I've, and I've eaten them this morning, and they were gorgeous. Some, uh, some Tesco finest, finest sardines. Sardines, oh, Mrs. John Cooper. There's a, a big saying, cow. you get what you pay for. I had a Chunuk's tea cake, courtesy of Alan, oh, and that, yeah. was, that was also very I good. spotted them in my local... Piddle shop, and I thought, ah, Tunnocks. Yeah. Well, actual Tunnocks tea cakes. Yeah, there was Tunnocks ones. Oh, not like the little. I no, know. there was Tunnocks Tunnocks. Tunnocks. <laughs> Marshmallow. No, cakes. there was some Tunnocks in Lidl. Oh, there you are. Uh, so we met lots of good people. And then I want to talk to you about something new for us, which I really enjoyed and you didn't enjoy. We were on the stage oh. with Danny Hopkins from Practical Classics. Mm. Uh, with... Well, he made the job easy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, with he Matt knows from what, Furious Driving. Bloke knows what he's doing. And I wanted to have a good chat with that blooming bloke that does Jaguars, you know. But... From a guy from Sweden? Yeah. Yeah, he's like living with... He's from the channel, I think, living with a classic. And he was a very interesting yeah. young lad. I just liked to better sitting down and chat with him. But our stage time... Well, it went quite quick. I think it was on yeah. there for about 40 minutes. But uh, we initially spoke about... The channel, yeah. what we do, and what car we were in, and then the downfall of British motoring. Yeah. Which I know nothing about. So I just sat there and went, I don't know, Danny. Speak to this man. And you had some interesting things to say about Rover and... The whole British car industry, really. Did you enjoy your time on the stage? Not really, no. Would you do it again? If I can get out of it, I will. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rest of all, lot are not going to invite us next time. <laughs> It, it's their loss. <laughs> <laughs> I um, no, I enjoyed the time on the stage. And it yeah, was, well, you're a bit of an exhibitionist. Yeah, though, absolutely. Is, is, well, I'm not. I'm sort of a backroom boy, mate. Well, you can be. I don't know. Fixing a head gasket while I'm on the stage next time. <laughs> Talking about fixing head gaskets, you were you were asked if you would fix Matt's head gasket, but he can do it himself. We. Uh, it's just time for the poor bloke. He's busy. We do it for fun, not for uh, for business opportunities. And we, we only work on our own cars, don't we? Uh, um, uh, and do you know what? I ha this this could be a separate video with a clickbait title: "The Truth About the Inspector." 
Uh, but a lot of people asked us about the inspector, yeah. didn't they? Where's the inspector? Why is the inspector not here? And we had to tell the good people of the world there's a reason the inspector isn't there, and that's because she's not very friendly. She seems all cute and fluffy and lovely and inspectory in, in our videos because she's family. She doesn't like other people or other dogs. She would be fully growled out by the end of the day, wouldn't she? <laughs> I'd have had to lock her in the micro. Yeah. And that wouldn't have been fair. No. So um, She's not... She's not dangerously Oh, no, grumpy. no, no, no. She's just grumpy. She's a grumpy old lady. She's a grumpy old lady. And One of my neighbours used to have a dog that used to have to be sedated before it went to the vets. Wow, well, no. She, she's okay with the vets. She's all right. But, yeah, maybe we'll have another video clickbait title with pictures of Crystal. Anyway, the, the, inspector, inspector. the inspector, she's not very sociable. But we didn't take the inspector. So if you're wondering why, that's why. Lots of people ask us, didn't they? Yeah, lots of people. Why have you brought the inspector? Where's the inspector? She's too old anyway. Yeah, she's an old girl. Old girl now, bless her. She's fast asleep right now. <laughs> she was happy to see me when I got back from holiday, though, which is good news. Yes, I'm pleased there was at all. It would have been awful if she said, mm, mm. <laughs> so do you. Well, she did woof at you, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> well, yeah, let's, while we're talking about the inspector, you spent two and a half weeks with the inspector yeah. here. How, how was that? It's all right. Me and the inspector get on well. Yeah, just messing about, wandering yeah. about, doing this, that and the other. Uh, but yeah, I didn't bring her this morning. We should have brought yeah, her. She actually had the zoomies one day. And I've never seen her do that. <laughs> <laughs> she must have... Uh, must have enjoyed being spoilt with all the sardines. And, yeah, you have spoiled her as well. Because right. now we sit and have our tea, and afterwards she's there like, uh, Grandad would have given me some chicken. Grandad would have given me some leftovers. Where's the leftovers? But there is no leftovers. I didn't. I saved some for her. Yeah, no. In we fact, don't she do got that. the sardines before I did. <laughs> Here's your piece of sardine. Spoilt grandchild. Um, anyway, so we met lots of cool people. We met lots of nice people, and um, there were people. I wanted to meet that I didn't get to meet, such as Ben from Tasty Classics. I had a little bit of a fleeting chat with JM on cars. Uh, he didn't seem too interested in wanting to speak to me about my micro. <laughs> but no, I didn't want to come and do a, a feature on you, did he? <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a good so day. What sort of things does he do? JM does all sorts of stuff. He's done a Proton Satria GTI, but oh. he was there with the Ferrari. But he does it full time. It's... It's, I think he makes it look easy, but it, this is not easy, doing this full-time. This is just us chatting in a garage, but he does it, does it full-time. But you had a good time. Yeah, you can't not have a good time at the Rustival. We had a wander around then, so our highlights of the day are on the channel. Uh, your highlight of the day was the... Oh, that Cresta. Vauxhall Cresta. Yeah, which is a fairly traditional sort of classic, really, isn't it? And a lot of people picked that as their special yeah. car of the day. Um, there was a Pontiac there that was quite special as well. Mm, some nice minis as well. Minis that hadn't been messed about with too much. And Nissan Cubes. Yeah, Nissan Cube. If you've got a Nissan Cube UK spec that hasn't been messed about with, that's for sale. DM. Because <laughs> I, I want a Nissan Cube. I've decided. Yeah, you've got a load of crumbish to get rid of yet then. Do you know what I did get offered this week? What? A beautiful Bentley Turbo oh. long wheelbase. Good. Uh, it would have been... Pop money, you know, but it would have cost us a lot of money in maintenance and, and fuel. fuel and running costs. So I said no to the Bentley long wheelbase. I'm pleased you jolly well did. But uh, it would have been nice. There's only one person I need to cultivate, and that's Mrs. John Copeland. I think she's got more influence than anybody over you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she stopped me from buying a van recently, but yeah, that's okay. Sensible lady. That's all right. Um, one thing I would say is a lot of people left earlier this time. We went up to look at the Mayfair parking. Do you think, I was thinking about that, because I was thinking it's more dark nights, wouldn't it be? Yeah, I suppose so. And people have got a long way to go. Folks have come from all over the blinking universe. Alan's st stopping over, but... Yeah. But he's come uh, from Edinburgh. By about half one, two o'clock, there was quite a few yeah. spaces appearing. But it's, it's about attending, I suppose. It's what they've got out of the rust of what they wanted, and they've got, which is fine. Yeah. Um... And then we had a wander around the museum. I wanted to see the prototype MGs. That museum, you do need several trips to see it all, really. So we had this conversation about the British Motor Museum that we had a preconception of once you've done it, you've done it. No, because you ain't got it all done. You haven't. And then, as you say, they move stuff about yeah. and they bring stuff in and take stuff away mm. and do stuff and they're always working on stuff. We went to look at the Jaguar Daimler collection mm. first and you showed us around a 
The V12 the V12 plugs. Engine. Oh, that's what we need to see. Excuse me, folks. Ah, yes, yes. What you got there? That's the special socket for getting the plugs out near where that uh, air conditioning compressor is. So you showed us in our Rust of a Walkabout video a special tool oh, to get... You need a tool to get the plugs out. From yeah, you, so you showed us the, the, the plugs and said you need a special tool. And there it is. There is a special tool. Is that actually, a, is that something you've made? No, it's not. It's probably some welding. I think, I think I split it and I've welded it up. It says Churchill 18611364. I'm assuming that's the part number, is it? Churchill was a tool for a firm that made special tools for Jaguar. There you go. Churchill 18693364, something like that. But it's got a part number on it engraved in there. That's quite yeah. cool. So that is a proper tool, that a special is. tool for taking spark plugs yeah. out of a V12 Jaguar engine yeah. um, near the front, near the air compressor. Yeah, it's been welded up because it's split. Yeah, that's the tool. There you go. Well, you know what I need to do now, don't you? What? I need to buy a V12 Jag. Uh, no. I nearly did, didn't I? There was a supercharged V12 Jag at a car show and... Uh, well, I'd have probably ended up killing myself driving it, so I didn't, didn't buy it, but... I think we shall all go to... I wonder if that's TIG. I bet it is. Sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking about the welding. <laughs> um, oh, you've yeah. welded that up. Oh, yeah, I've done that bit there. Let's have a look at it. I bet you can buy one on eBay, but I bet it's not that, uh, oh. that special. Somebody will be selling one, won't they? Yeah. Anyway. That's a special tool then. Good. Yeah. Glad we've seen that. So we've had a tool of the week in Rustaval Roundup as well. But That's true. But overall, a good day. Yeah. The journey home was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We left. God knows which way the Saturday took us. About but five o'clock. I never looked on the map to see which way it took us. It took us a weird way, didn't it? Mm. It took us a couple of hours to get there and a couple of hours to get back. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, I think the takeaway from the Rustaval... I bet in 1975 I could have done it quicker on a motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I could do it quicker in a V12 jack. <sighs> the takeaway then was you had a good day at the Rustaval. We didn't get nicked by that speed van on the motorway then. I suppose he saw Nissan Micra coming down the fast lane and thought, no, nah, well, Why would I get nicked? I wasn't doing... I know. So but I do you think he even bothered to put... Well, looked and shall I point it at the Nissan Micra? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not even point it at oh, the Nissan yeah. That's someone's, Nissan. someone's kebab's going to get cold. <laughs> I suppose the takeaway then is the rust of all was a good day. Takeaway was in the Nissan Micra, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the takeaway then, and the whole point of this video is, Rustaval 2, a roaring success. It was as good as Rustaval 1. It was. There didn't seem to be as many cars there, but... Well, they said it was a sellout. It was a sellout. I think what, what didn't help was the, the weather leading up to the Rustaval. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. a few people didn't turn we'll up. They'll say, oh, this bloody weather, let's not bother buying the tickets. Yeah. But it was a good day. I enjoyed it. Um, thanks, as ever, to the YouTube's the stars and Mr. Pink, yeah, who in his own right is a star. He is. Puts a lot of effort in the guy. For, for putting the show on. Uh, thanks to you for getting the micro. Must be very stressful for him when you've got all that yeah. happening and you think to yourself, what's going to happen if the weather's pants? Yeah. yeah. So they must have been very relieved and made a lovely day. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, thanks to you for getting the micro ready. Yeah, it's my idea when it, so I had to do it. Did you enjoy getting the mic ready or...? Yeah. It's on the road again, which is a winner for me. I enjoyed driving it. Uh, there'll be lots more micro videos coming. I'm going to do a test drive video and we're going to have a wander around in it. It's a good little old car. It is what it is, isn't it? It's of its era. It, it makes me smile and obviously it's my first car, which is what yeah. makes it special. Um, a bargain of a day out, honestly, in comparison to yeah. some car shows that we are advocates of that are now £40 to get into. Uh, it will remain nameless, but you can read between the lines. It's a bloody good day, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, oh, I, but, it's, but, still, it's still not overpriced. It's one car, isn't it? So yeah. if four of you went, it's a tenner each. Yeah, but for some people, it's a bone of contention. I'm still a big fan of it, but yeah, it's yeah. a good car. If show. one person on their own, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I suppose, actually... Actually, if we do the maths, if you take four of you to Rustaval, 
it's forty-four pounds. Yeah. If you take four of you to the other car, show, to the other car show, it's forty pounds. It's cheaper. <laughs> Controversial that, but um, it's it's it swings around about, isn't it? But uh, price point good. You get access to the museum. Are some car shows free still or not? Yeah, the Boston Classic Car Show is free to get into because they charge the public, though, do they? They charge the public to get into, <laughs> but we are the exhibitors. If so without the, exhibi those, the exhibitors are free, are they? This is a whole kettle of fish. This is a whole different can of worms we're about to open up here. And a whole different video of should car shows be free to exhibit. It all depends what the site you're on, doesn't it? But uh, that could possibly if be. If you can get a field fairly cheap, it's all right, isn't it? But, but if you've got... either which way, there's a lot of effort that went in. It costs to have the venue. And we had a great day. I'm well, not yeah. going to begrudge 22 quid to have such a good day. Well, not day in out. this day and age. Absolutely not. Um, I went to a place, we went to a bike night, and it was a fiver to get in, and there's using the funds for a charitable cause. Okay with that. A man with me was sort of, not grumbling, but commenting on the fact, as he was licking into his three pound ice cream. You know, I said, where much was your ice cream? Well, three pounds. Well, it's only cost five to get in here. <sighs> so, anything, let's face it, anything's a fiver these days, isn't it? It cost us nothing. Because the revenue from our Rustable video has paid for our entrance. There you go. Where else can you get that much enjoyment for £11? Exactly. <laughs> you exactly. can't, can you? Exactly. Um, but apart from that, apart from all that political side of things that I don't want to get into, we had a good time. Yeah. We had a good day. There's some people on the Twitter are a bit concerned about the cost of things, are they? I think a lot of people have made reference recently to the cost of the other car show. Yeah. Uh, if you're going on your own, it's If you're expensive. going on your own, it's expensive. Yeah. If you're going with the Ford Galaxy and you've got seven of you in there, it's an absolute bargain, isn't it? Yeah, that's true, mate. Anyway. That'd be brecky. Oh, no. 11 o'clock. Takeaway is, though, good day at the Rustaval. Thanks, as ever, to the team for putting it on. Well-priced, lots of interesting people. Lots of good cars. That's the best thing about it, really. And, uh, and it was... You know, you see people who aren't your average car show person. Yeah. I enjoy it, because yeah. you get to meet lots of people. To me, I didn't care about the micro being there. I could have turned up in the Nissan Note. Yeah. To me, it was about A, wandering around and having a chat with you, spending the time with yourself. B, meeting people that watch the videos. Oh, we'll have to polish the Nissan Note up next year and take it. <laughs> and C, seeing everyone else's cars. Did it, was there any Nissan Notes there? No. Oh, well then. There wasn't any Peugeot 406s there either. No. You got a special invite in this. I know, she, she doesn't leave the county anymore. No. She's Which just, is a shame. She's a bit edgy, she doesn't like leaving the county anymore. You're a bit scared about taking it far. <laughs> I guess it breaks down and we ring the recovery. Anyway. Uh, Rustaval 3, please. Are we going to Rustaval 3 when it's announced? Well, if I'm still alive, yeah. <laughs> oh, crikey. What? what? You never know. That's the hot take. If Dad's not dead, we're off to Rustaval 3. Hey? What are we taking? Who knows? I reckon the snail van ought to go. I've never seen another snail van at the Rustaval. Do you know what? That is what we're taking to Rustaval 3. <laughs> that is what we're taking. The snail van. If, uh, if you're not dead. Yeah, if I'm not dead. Good. If the snail van's not dead. If Dad's not dead, Rustaval 3, Fiat Doblo, Royal Snail Van. I'm not cleaning it. <laughs> Take it as it is. I'm not, I'm not cleaning it. Can we it? have some black patches on the sills before we go? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you have red patches on the sills. No, I'm going to have a whole... I'm going to strip it. Dip it, respray, full, two and a half thousand pound. You're not getting that restored for two and a half Restoration. <sighs> We're in the garage. Getting you up, mate. I was up early this morning. I got up at half past six to start on the Peugeot. If you've enjoyed this video, our little nonsense chat, absolute waffle. Time wasting waffle. Time wa amateurish in the extreme uh, Rustaval roundup. Thumbs up, please, if you can. Uh, if you haven't already done so, Please consider subscribing to the channel. Over 11,000 subscribers. Top people. 11,000. Thank, so thank you very much. 
Um, comment down below. Did you attend Rustival 2? What do you think to the idea of the Fiat Doblo snail van at Rustival 3? I love that idea. Will Dad be there or will he be dead? Uh, and uh, what was your car of the show? <laughs> I'm going to have to do that again because I don't want to put Will Dad be there or will he be dead in, in the outro. <laughs> Well, there you have it then. Uh, thanks for listening to this. Our waffling, time-wasting, rubbish, amateurs in the extreme nonsense about Rustival 2. Thumbs up, please, if you haven't already done so on the video. Uh, comment down below. Were you at the Rustival 2? What do you reckon to the idea of the Fiat Doblo Royal Snail Van at Rustival 3? I'm going to let you pick... For Rustival 4, we'll put all the cars in a hat and you can pick one out of them. Well, there certainly weren't no snail vans there, were there? There wasn't, no. We should be the only snail van. Don't tell people. People are going to do their own snail van now for Rustival 3. Cool. What did you think? <laughs> There'd be loads. Oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> 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 uh, hey, snail of all. Influencer. <laughs> um, let us know in the comments down below what your car of the show was. And uh, keep watching. Thanks very much. 11,000 subscribers. You're all absolute legends. Till next time. Folks. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. And goodbye. I'm going to film that outro again because that was terrible. Was it? That's it then. That's our... It's better with a bit what if Dad's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this latest episode of Pistons, the podcast. Another one is coming shortly. But if you haven't caught up yet, there's previous episodes on this page now. And don't forget to hit subscribe to always get caught up with the latest podcast.